we're going to build a fine time solution for uh, with graph and power apps and for everyone who uh, does not still know me hi uh, i'm louisa i'm an m365 and power platform consultant based in germany um i'm an mvp in two categories which is m365 development and business applications i blog at m365princess.com and if you like to follow me on twitter that's um at louisa fraser which um, happens to be my name so the problem that I wanted to solve is how to find suitable meeting time with lots of people. So of course you have quite some options. You can send endless emails back and forth. So, and as you might see indicated by this emoji, I don't like that. And then of course there are tools for you to do that, like fight time in Outlook. Um, but then you need to wait until other people replied if they do have time or not, or what they prefer. And literally this can take a little bit longer as well if you really need to schedule a large meeting. And of course, you can also contact switch to Outlook and use this super intuitive uh, feature called schedule a meeting. No one knows how to do this and most people mess up with that and it's not intuitive. Um, especially regarding time zones, so that is an issue as well. And also I don't like the fact that usually I work a lot in teams and then I need to switch to Outlook to do that. And I really wanted to have a different experience. And that of course would be have an app for teams in teams and let Microsoft Graph do that heavy lifting of scheduling the meeting and find a suitable time for all of these people for you. So um, very, very big disclaimer. I stole this idea from uh, Valdek Masikars, who uh, published a blog post and a sample and just like a video and everything about that already. And I will um, post the links um, after this demo into the chat as well. But um, let's talk about why I did that. So it is an amazing sample because as you can see here in that screenshot, which happens to be from his blog, um, link in the chat soon as well. It is really about first picking some people that you really want to have a meeting with. Um, decide on the meeting duration and I find 25 minutes is a perfect duration for a meeting because meetings shouldn't be longer. Um, but um, you can of course stick to other uh, times as well. Uh, that have a button that finds you those meeting times and of course yes so this is powered by Graph API that will return um, some meeting slots that where all of these people are available and then you just enter your location and the meeting subject and schedule that meeting right away. So that is what the app does and I was like, okay, I like that, but I wanted to have that as a Power Apps Canvas app and I wanted to have that in a Power Apps Canvas apps for teams. Um, obviously, um, I know my way around graph, so I already knew which endpoints I needed to hit because of all they described that in pretty much detail. It was like, okay, so then maybe first start with a UI. And I mean, how hard can it be um, to create that? And really, these were famous last words because I promise you, I really had some, um, let's say, UI requirements. I did not only want that to be kind of pretty ish but I wanted that to look like Microsoft Graph Toolkit, which happens to be that what Wildek used in his solution. The problem with that is that Microsoft Graph Toolkit, and we'll talk about that in a minute as well. So it's a set of web components and providers that make you more easily interact with data that sits in Graph, so literally everything in M365, but that is not available to Power Apps. So I needed to create something to, to still make that happen. Next requirement, I really wanted to adopt that look and feel of team. So usually Power Apps look like a little bit out of place and not really up to date when you put them into Teams. And I really wanted to app that blends into that look and feel. And then of course, I wanted to have that themes where, so I like to use dark mode. Maybe you like to use default mode or the other way around. And of course, um, considering high contrast as well. So um, I think it is um, time to demo you some stuff so that we understand what we are talking about. So I will first start with Microsoft Graph Toolkit Playground. 
So Microsoft Graph uh, Toolkit Playground, it's um, a beautiful website that lets you explore and play around um, with the toolkit components. And I just wanted to show you what was about the look and feel that I was aiming at. So you can see this text input box and this prompts here, this um, pop up, and I can now select those um, people here. And of course, I can also just search for these people to uh, more easily find them and then select those. And that was the look and feel that I was aiming for. Now let's have a look how this plays out in the app so that you get a perception on what I did. So um, this is my app. Um, it is in Microsoft Teams. We're here in my productivity hub, which happens to be an app for my meetings, my tasks, my files, people I work with, just like this single pane of glass that we all want um, to have. And here in that section about my meetings, I do not only have the upcoming and past meetings, but I also have a link for, hey, make a new meeting. So when I select that, I can start typing a name like A, and then I want to have um, Adele selecting her or selecting Grady or selecting Miriam, but I can also um, type right away to more easily find my co-workers. Um, I can collapse that then again. I will find a meeting duration that is suitable for me, let's say 45 minutes, and I want to find a meeting time. And as you can see, I get some suggestions back here and I will I will decide for this one here, provide um, uh, provide a title. So this is just another meeting and schedule that meeting right away, right from um, this app. And you can see my meeting, just another meeting with Adele, Grady, Miriam has been scheduled. So I even got an indication that that um, happened as well. If I'm not a user of um, the default uh, theme in Teams, and if I restart that app, because of course that can't happen um, if this is already um, started because of the way I designed that, um, this works pretty nicely in dark mode as well. And you can see that um, it just here so um, that I could meet my design requirements. Now, how does that work under the hood? So what do we need to do so that we can find those people that we work with and also find the meeting slots where these people are available and then schedule that meeting so that everyone gets an invite for a Teams meeting into their calendar. To better understand this, it's a very good idea to start with um, Graph Explorer. Graph Explorer is one of my most favorite um, tools um, because it lets me just like try out uh, what happens or what do I get in return when I hit a certain endpoint in the Graph API. Um, and of course, uh, we all usually start with um, get me. And when we do this, um, we get information on who we are, so we as uh, our logged in user. And what I needed to do is I wanted to hit slash me slash people because these are the people I primarily work with. Um, and what happens if you hit that endpoint is you get an array of people that you work with. So this is here, Alex and Adele and so many more people and we get extensive information on these people. So we needed to hit slash me slash people to uh, get those people so that we could uh, put them into this people picker, right? That is the first thing. Second thing, we want to um, get those meeting slots, which happens to be a post request to slash me slash find meeting times. Um, we will need to provide the attendees. So in this case, it is only one, but of course you can add um, more uh, by providing here another object uh, for that um, person. Then, of course, we need to have the time constraints. Um, so you need to provide when, so in, in which time frame do you want to have that meeting? I put a year in here, but it's usually, so depending on the calendar, of course, but it's usually just like in the next um, day. So it always picks um, what is the um, closest um, availability of all people. And then the meeting uh, duration is uh, good as well. So this year is um, 30 minutes, but if I wanted to have um, 45 minutes, I would just um, exchange that. 
if we do this, if we run this, this will return um, an array with um, time slots so that we know when all of these people um, are available um, according to their calendars. And um, of course, I can then work with that in my app. And you, you saw this, that um, after I clicked um, this, um, this, uh, this, this, this button for find my meeting times that it was thinking just like a second and after that um, displaying the, uh, the, the um, available meeting slot. Third thing that we need to do now that we know, okay, these five slots are available, uh, we need to um, create an event and I would uh, then go for a slash me slash events because that's my calendar and it's uh, pretty um, nice to do that way. So of course you can um, you can do that on Teams as well, but that one is easier um, and you will provide a subject. You will provide the start and the end. And of course, that is the result of the previous call. So we need to do this dynamically and then you will provide the attendees um, of that meeting. And then there is two things that are really important so that this is also a Teams meeting, because usually if you do slash me slash events that do not have these two properties, it's only a meeting. And then you can meet in person, but you do not have that Teams um, link. But we we want to do that to be inclusive to everyone. So it needs to be an is online meeting is true and online meeting provider needs to be Teams for business. OK. To bring that power that I now showed in the Graph Explorer to the Power App, I need to create a custom connector. So a custom connector is a proxy or a wrapper around that API. So in this case, Microsoft Graph. And then I can um, connect this connector to my Power App and call this API because it is not possible to call an API just like that. I need to uh, first create that connector. And I will highlight, um, you can see I have 16 actions in this connector here, and I will highlight the three actions that we need um, to cover so that we know what's going on in this demo. So first it is the get my people. So what I do is it is the very same thing as we did in Graph Explorer. It is slash me slash people. And that will return my coworkers that I primarily work with. Um, and of course that depends a little bit on how many messages and teams and files. So it it calculates that with um, with some logic, so it is really how much you interact uh, with another person. Um, next thing that we need to do is we need to um, do the get uh, meeting times, and I told you this is a post request, and we will hit slash me slash find meeting times. And um, of course, the body is the very same as in Graph Explorer, so that we can then um, get this um, array of um, suggested meeting times in return. And the last thing that we need to do is the um, post a meeting. So I said it's post meeting and um, we do uh, slash me slash events and of course provide the very same body as in Graph Explorer, which is why that is such a great tool because it is literally just like really the same um, so that I then can create the event. To show you how we do this, so this is the component. So this here is my screen. And now this uh, find meeting time is uh, grayed out because there is no people in here. So I um, I will not um, show this, but for the find meetings, what it does is it connects to my connector. It calls that action here. It gets meeting times and provides the attendees the time constraints. Um, if it shall return the uh, reasons why it suggested something and of course um, the minimum attendee percentage which needs to be 100 because I want all of them. So this is the call that I am making and then of course I in return then get this array and this array then will feed here my gallery and the gallery consists um, out of the um, meeting time suggestions. For the people picker itself, so you can see that is from a UI perspective, it is a little bit more elaborated than what you usually see in a Power Apps. I created a component for that. Um, worth to note about this component is this is a text input box, and then we have two galleries. 
So one gallery is the gallery people, which is my co-workers uh, that connect to the slash me slash people um, endpoint with that custom connector. And uh, I took care that this really shows up nicely with pictures and the display name and that I have everything in here. And the other gallery is the gallery attendees. So whenever I select one of those here, it disappears from that collection of people and it appears here in my collection of attendees. And if I as a user made a mistake and I do not want to have Adele in here, then I can just like remove her and she will appear here again in my um, gallery of attendees. Um, those um, items here it is pretty easy. So that shape here is a button in view modus. Um, then we have the um, image which comes from the um, Office 365 user connector and then I inserted that again to that user ID that I got from my um, get my people um, action from the custom graph connector and then just the display name and next icon that uh, takes care of removing that um, item again from my gallery. Um, I included this expand and collapse and as you can see um, the more I add here so that I would not any more fit in here so I am um, working on making this fully responsive but it already looks quite nicely if I change the resolution or the screen size or screen orientation of that. Um, next thing, next thing would be going here so after I select it after I selected um, something here so there needs to be um, a slot selected and it does not work right now why does it not oh wait okay it did work now it does not work anymore wait 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 Ah, here it is. Um, we provide this uh, meeting subject over here and then we will schedule the meeting. And what happens on schedule the meeting? Um, it is again my connector and I say it's the post meeting um, action and we provide the subject and start and end and you can do a location. So this here just wherever uh, the attendees sit in a collection which I call call attendees. Um, and uh, this is already in the correct format uh, for that. And yet again, to make this a Teams meeting, we go for is online meeting is true and online meeting provider is Teams for Business. So it's really the very same thing as we tried out in Graph Explorer and then just put that into a custom connector and make that call then in a Power App. So if you now wonder, um, well, Louisa, this is nice, but um, I would like to have that because I could really use that because the um, the built in people picker is a little bit uh, ugly. Then I have some resources for you. So the um, sample for the Fluent UR North Star theme so that everything looks like teams already and you have this theme awareness for dark default and high contrast mode. I published that as a sample and this um, people pick a lookalike um, component. Uh, I published that also um, as a sample. So you can find that at adoption.microsoft.com and I also published a blog post that explains how you can build such a solution um, by yourself. And with that, back to you, David. That was uh, wait for it. Amazing, <laughs> Louisa. I, you really powered up. <laughs> right? Perfect. Awesome. Really, really great stuff. All right. Well, thank you. And those links are in the chat, everybody, for learning more about that. Uh, and so if you want to, you can definitely get more involved and reach out and collaborate with Louisa.